All right, Alexander, let's talk about what's going on in Ukraine, specifically what's going on with Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, um, the guy that Zelensky took over for. And uh, he is now being brought up on treason charges. Ukrainian authorities are accusing Petro Poroshenko, the chocolate king, because he's a billionaire. Um, he has a, a big chocolate business and he became a billionaire off of that chocolate business. Petro Poroshenko of having helped pro-Russian separatists sell coal to Kiev. That is the, uh, the excerpt, the byline in uh, Al Jazeera. The title says, Ukraine accuses former President Poroshenko of treason. What is going on here? Poor Porky Poroshenko. <laughs> Who's actually left the country. Uh, 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 he's refused to accept the summons. He's left the country. He's go going on a tour. And one of the people he's going to visit and meet and have no doubt coffee with is his old buddy and good friend, Bartholomew II, the patriarch of Constantinople, the man who agreed to set up that church, that uh, church in Ukraine. But anyway, putting all that aside, what is going on? Well, I mean, it's, I think, blindingly obvious that the situation politically in Ukraine is deteriorating almost by the hour. And it's quite clear also that Zelensky is feeling that his political position is becoming increasingly insecure. So what he is doing is he's bringing treason charges against his major political opponents. At the start of this year, he brought political charges against Viktor Medvedchuk, who is the head of the biggest opposition party in the East, and who for a time looked as if he would mount a significant electoral challenge to Zelensky. And Zelensky launched an attack on Medvedchuk. He seized the, uh, the various TV stations that were supporting Medvedchuk's party. He, uh, um, uh, he um, closed down various newspapers. He took action against a very influential blog, Strana, which circulates in Ukraine and which advocates some sort of rapprochement with Russia, as Medvedchuk, by the way, also does. And, of course, then he brought treason charges against Medvedchuk, who is currently under house arrest. Medvedchuk, by the way, refused to leave Ukraine. He insisted on staying there, saying that he would fight the treason charges. So they, that was Medvedchuk. Now he's turned against Poroshenko, because Poroshenko's party is now overtaking his own party, is now becoming more popular than his own party. And Poroshenko himself, incredibly, from having been an utterly discredited and loathed figure just two, uh, just two years ago, is now overtaking Zelensky in the popularity charts. So Zelensky now comes after him. We have these ludicrous charges that Poroshenko, of all people, the man who gained power directly after the Maidan events, in February 2014, the man who launched the offensive against Eastern Ukraine in the summer of 2014, the person who tried to launch a second offensive against uh, uh, the Donbass in uh, 2015, all of which ended in disaster, by the way, the person who has taken, who has stood for the uh, uh, you know Ukrainian nationalism in most extreme form that he supposedly also is somehow committed to treason against Ukraine by buying coal for Ukraine by the way from the Donbass. I mean it is a ludicrous charge. It is so bizarre that I suspect even people in Ukraine don't take it seriously. And what it suggests is an isolated, paranoid president. He's already going around talking wildly about coups against him and things of that kind. A wildly uh, 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 paranoid president senses his political position is disintegrating and he's now lashing out at anybody he, could, he can see as a possible or conceivable challenger. Yeah, well said on, uh, on Poroshenko. We should never forget that Poroshenko launched a terrible war, killed Yeah. Tens of thousands of people, his own yeah. people, yeah, absolutely. his own citizens. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's absolutely disgraceful that uh, a Greek Orthodox uh, leader like Bartholomew actually mm. sits down with him and considers him a friend. Shame on Bartholomew, shame on the Greek Orthodox Church for that. Uh, yeah. But uh, 
with with Zelensky, it, it's very difficult to to understand who's like um, pulling the levers of power in Ukraine. Obviously, the oligarchs, you know, are, are the most powerful players in Ukraine. Poroshenko being one of those oligarchs. Absolutely. Uh, who do you think? I mean, I, I I definitely see Zelensky is losing his mind. I can definitely yeah. see that he's probably scared that he's going to get. Uh, <laughs> who knows what's going to come to him? Uh, but uh, who who do you think is pulling the strings? The, the strings above or behind Zelensky, or is anyone pulling the strings? Has he been cut off? Maybe his yeah. oligarch sponsorship has kind of been cut off and they've let him loose. And now he's really scared because maybe he doesn't have the protection of a certain oligarch or a class of oligarchs. And maybe that's why he's he's kind of losing his mind and making all these moves. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's Zelensky's motivation in all of this? And is there motivation behind the curtain in all this? Or have the people behind the curtain said... You know what, Zelensky, you know what, Ukraine, it's just all going down the toilet. We're out. We're cutting, uh, we're cutting all of our, we're cutting this whole thing loose, this whole project loose. It's never easy to say. And you're absolutely right. When, when Zelensky became president, it, it's now become increasingly clear, clear that he became president with a lot of backing from powerful Ukrainian oligarchs, the most powerful backer was a man called Igor Kolomoisky, who was, who was at one time the second most powerful oligarch in Ukraine. But it seems other oligarchs like Rinat Akhmetov were backing Zelensky also. My sense is, and of course we can never be absolutely certain about this, is that the oligarchs have indeed cut Zelensky off. They've decided that he's, position, that he's absolutely um, unviable, that he just hasn't a clue what he's doing. And that this is one of the reasons why uh, you see Zelensky acting with this growing sense of panic, lashing out in all directions, talking wildly about how he's the target of uh, planned coup attempts and all of those sort of things. He still has some support from the very hardline, ultra radical elements that are gathered in Ukraine's National Security Council. Now, these are basically hardline militant people, people who control various militia groups. They still, for the moment, are supporting Zelensky, because from their point of view, he's a weak leader whom they can control. And, of course, their concern is not with the economic situation of Ukraine. They are more concerned about preserving the purity of the ideological project of the, you know, single language, single faith Ukraine that they want to see. So they, they to some extent, have been supporting Zelensky up to now. But I, my sense is that the oligarchs are collectively have had enough. And I think that these actions that Zelensky is taking against Medvedchuk, who, to be very clear, is also backed by oligarchs in eastern Ukraine. I mean, you know, every significant political figure in Ukraine is backed by oligarchs to some degree. Uh, so these actions that he's taking, first against Medvedchuk, but now especially against Poroshenko, are a sign that whatever support he had from the oligarch class is, 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 ha has been taken from him, and that, in effect... He's operating without any real foundation, without any real support below him. And um, one wonders how long this can go on for. I suspect there's detailed negotiations and discussions probably taking place in places like Vilnius, where there was a big meeting recently of oligarchs and their backers in Switzerland. Always things like this are talked about in Switzerland all kinds of talks and discussions about how they're going to get this disastrous president out of power and what, what they're going to do next. So I suspect there's an awful lot of that going on in Ukraine at the moment. So we have to wait and see what that results in. Is, uh, is the U.S. government still backing Zelensky or do you think the U.S. government is participating in these meetings with the other oligarchs as well? Or are they doing both? Are they playing both sides? I think they're playing both sides. I mean, my impression is that the embassy in, in Kiev, the U.S. embassy in Kiev, is still running very strong on the Zelensky project. I mean, the embassy is populated 
<laughs> to be to say it straightforwardly, by neocon hardliners who are very invested in the Ukraine project. They've supported every repressive move, if you like, that Zelensky has taken. And I think they still believe that he's the right person, partly because I also get the sense that the embassy is very uh, aligned with those military hard hardliners in the Security Council that I was talking about before. But I think there are other people in Washington who are starting to sense that the situation is slipping out of control. And I'm sure that there are people in the intelligence community, for example, who are worriedly talking to the oligarchs in Ukraine at the moment to see what's happening and to try and make sure that if Zelensky is out of power, whoever takes his place is not going to change uh, Ukraine's foreign policy orientation. So I think all that all that is going on and underway at the present time. I, I, I consider this action against Poroshenko uh, and the actions of an increasingly desperate and paranoid man, Zelensky, and a, a further sign that his time is running out. Yeah. Uh, would the U.S. final question would the U.S. be okay with Poroshenko coming back in, oh, yeah. or do you think they may have another name that they would like to, uh, you know, put up there? I think they'd be fine with Poroshenko coming back in. The one thing they mo they would be worried about is whether Poroshenko, uh, uh, having been r comprehensively defeated in the last election in 2019 would be strong enough to reassert control across the whole of Ukraine. And I think there, might, there would be worry about that. But um, it's difficult to see who could take over apart from you know, Poroshenko or Zelensky, because one of the problems with Ukraine is that it's a, it's a political desert, because all of the really powerful figures have been pushed aside. One figure you've always got to consider is Timoshenko, Yulia Timoshenko. She's been trying uh, recently to reassert herself as a political force in Ukraine. Whether she's acceptable to the US, I don't know. She probably would be, actually, but she's a bit difficult to control, if only because she's actually quite, a, you know, she, she's a more, one sense is an intelligent and independent-minded figure as compared with Poroshenko and Zelensky. So I, I, I think that the US would struggle to find someone else who has the political authority, if you like, to keep the situation in Ukraine under control, but at the same time is not Poroshenko or Zelensky, and both of those figures now look increasingly discredited. I wonder what the Russian... Uh intelligence is doing behind the scene in Ukraine? Well, like that's another... How they're maneuvering that's a, things. That, that is another very good question. Yeah. That's no, another no very good really question. No one really talks about that. But, no, nobody does uh, talk about that, but it is inconceivable that the Russians aren't talking to people behind the scenes. And there was a very, very interesting article published about two months ago by the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, who is, of course, now the deputy chair of Russia's Security Council, which is a very powerful position in Russia, very underestimated. And he published an article saying that, you know, what Russia is going to do is they're not going to waste any more time with Zelensky. He's an obvious clown. He's incapable of coming to any kind of agreements. They are going to wait until a new, more rational government emerges in Ukraine. Now, was it is it possible that Medvedev knew more than he was saying? And that he, when he wrote that article, it came out, I think, in October, when he wrote that article, he was aware that, uh, you know, talk is going on in the sub subterranean corridors, if you like, of Ukrainian politics about replacing Zelensky with someone else. So, you know, we'll just have to see. I mean, uh, uh, the Russians are definitely there. They're definitely talking to people behind the scenes. To what extent those people are prepared to move towards an understanding with Russia is a different matter. All right, we'll leave it there at the Duran.locals.com. Go to Odyssey Bit Shoot Rumble and the Super U, where you will find our videos there. And go to the Duran Shop, 10% off when you use the code GOODDAY. 
Alexander, you have a good day mug. I know you have a good day mug there. Always I have my good day mugs, yeah. One place I can, uh, the, the one place I'm able to go to still is the gym. And of course I, I have two. So I have this one for tea and coffee. The other one I have for water and things of that kind. So I take the other one with me to the gym. It's about the only place I can, I feel able to go to at the moment because well we have all kinds of things happening as we all know <laughs> but I still go to the gym and I have always my good day mug with me and they are magnificent they are wonderful and you must definitely get yourself one just write the word good day on checkout and you get 10% off all merchandise take care